And this story takes place in Fort Collins, Colorado, about 15 years ago. At the time, I'm living in a classic college dude house with four other guys. It's actually the same house where the infamous moped arson incident happened. So living in your classic dude house, around the corner from us was another house with five guys living in it and we're all buddies in the houses if something wasn't cooking in the house that you were living in you could always walk around the block see what was happening at the other house hey man you want to ride bikes to the brewery man and it was awesome classic college experience so at the t start of this story i am sitting not at my house but on the couch of the house around the corner couple of the guys that are living there are playing video games and I'm just killing time before work. When in walks through the door another one of the guys that lives in that house. Good friend of mine to this day and he's looking frazzled and stressed out and sweating and his hair's messed up and we're like what's going on man? And just a Quick backstory on his situation. At the time, he was finishing up an engineering degree and having a hell of a time doing it. I can't remember which math class it was, but he was struggling. The homeworks were going terrible. He tanked one of the tests, meaning that the pressure was really on for this next test. He got it, had to do well on that one. I think he was get his parents were breathing down his neck like don't blow it on the final stretch of this engineering degree you're almost here and so he was feeling the stress of the whole thing and so he he walks in the door looking even more disheveled than he had been for the past month as he's tanking this math class and so we're like what's going on and he tells us this story that Pretty much he's been at the end of his pitiful rope with this math class and he's been trying to get help and he's just blowing it and he doesn't know what to do. And he met this kind of suspicious character at the library that was saying, oh, I could help you out. Let me, I got a link where you can download the solutions manual for the book. So anyone that was in school knows that the math book that you get as the student just has the problem, but the math book that the teachers have have the problem and the answer has the that's the solution manual and so he was saying that he didn't know if it was it, if it was allowed or if it if he would get in trouble if he got caught with the downloading the solutions manual but anywho he was at the end of his pitiful rope and he took the guy's link and he officially had downloaded the solutions manual so the first time in a while though he had breezed through the homework and it had gone well and he had felt good but he was sitting there telling us, like, I'm a little bit nervous. I don't even know who this guy is and and so on. And we were like, dude, I think you're fine. You know, so what if you got the answers? It They should have the answers in there. You still have to know how to do the problem. And being able to check your answer after you do the work doesn't hurt someone learning how to do it. So we were kind of trying to calm him down. But I could definitely smell the fear because he was sitting there being like, no, I think I'm good, but he was saying, I think I'm good, but he, he was like staring, he was burning a hole through the coffee table. You could see the wheels in his mind working like, is, was this the right move? And right about that time, I was thinking, oh shoot, I got to go to work. I'm going to hit the restroom and then I'm going to get out of here. And their restroom was down in the basement. So I walked down into the basement and the friend who was having trouble with the math class that came in, his laptop was sitting there open as he walked, as I went into the basement, it was a Dell. Remember the, remember, dude, you're getting a Dell, man. Remember those commercials? So his Dell laptop is sitting there. And as I saw it open, you know, not locked or anything, I instantly got this idea to play a, just a nice, friendly, practical joke on my good buddy. And what the joke that I initially thought of is it would be funny to be able to send him a spoof email as the academic affairs being like we know you downloaded the solutions manual but there's no way for me to send a fake email and i was sitting there looking up the stairs i didn't want to get caught i was really in crunch time so i was limited on what i could do but which was fine to me so all i did was i pulled up notepad just microsoft notepad which is a white unlined screen that you can just write stuff on right 
And so that's really all I could do. And so I pull up Notepad. And so that's a huge weakness of the practical joke is that it doesn't look like an email or anything official. It just looks like writing on Notepad. So that was a weakness. But one of the strengths of it is I, the message I wrote out, I thought, for doing it quickly sounded pretty good. And also I could format it exactly like the university would send us messages. I had received a million of them by that point in my college career and knew exactly how they did it. So they'd always go last name, comma, first name, and then maybe like four or five spaces down. And then the message, and then they always would end it the same way. And so I quickly just hammered out like, you know, I put his last name, first name, and then I was like, we have detected one or more solutions manuals being downloaded to this IP address. We have a zero tolerance for academic dishonesty and a thorough investigation is going to be launched. And I used words like expulsion hearing and zero tolerance. And like I said, it was a weakness that it was just up on notepad, but a strength, I felt like the whole thing, I was just sitting there like, oh man, that turned out pretty good. And so I got to the end and I signed it, the head of academic affairs, Dave Dahlstedt. I just came up with it, sitting there in the moment. And then I used the bathroom, walked back upstairs, hey bros, I'll catch you later, I'm going to work, and went to work. At the time, I worked at a weed slash jam band themed sub sandwich shop and it worked a lot of the like dinner shifts so we got there and we would get whooped for the dinner rush it was right by campus there'd be 20 deliveries that needed to be made a line out the door and there'd be a cashier taking the orders um someone like doing half of the sandwiches putting the meat and cheese and getting everything on and then sending it through the oven and then one other person grabbing them as they come out of the oven putting on the veggies and all the sauces and everything so i'm in the before the oven getting everything prepped so i probably have 15 delivery orders to make maybe 10 orders of people that are standing right there there's still a line out the door you know, we're getting our butts whooped. So I pretty much had forgotten about the whole Dave Dahlstedt academic dishonesty, zero tolerance, expulsion, impending message that I wrote to my, on my friend's computer. So I'm sitting there trying to get through all these orders. And also too, if the owner of the weed themed, weed and jam band themed sub sandwich, uh, restaurant he was also really um he would really take email seriously so say like we were doing the dinner rush and the next day someone emailed like i had to wait 10 minutes for my sandwich in the height of the dinner rush when there was a line out the door the owner instead of being like this guy sounds like a sad loser and why would of course you're gonna have to wait during the dinner rush he would take every email that the place got and he would hang, he'd tack it up on the walk-in cooler so as you worked there for a whole week you'd have to look at the stupid email the the loser customer sent in i think as an owner of a company you need to know when you get a complaint like all right we dropped the ball we need to fix this and also just this guy this person is just sad and pathetic and we're not even going to entertain this stupid email so i got all these sandwiches making i'm trying not to be the subject matter of an angry email of someone that's tapping their foot being like even though there's a hundred people here i'd like my sandwich immediately and so i'm stressed out this the machine that prints out the receipts with the orders on it that then I take and put up is just nonstop shooting out these damn receipts. And uh, so I'm, tr I'm rushing, trying to stay on top of it. And all of a sudden my phone buzzes in my pocket. And I'm like, I, there's no way I can answer it. I just ignored it. I got gloves on. I got grease and oil and vinegar all over myself. And I'm frantically trying to make all these damn sandwiches. And then again, my phone, and so I'm thinking, I'm, I got to do, I think I got to do the, what the one thing you're not supposed to do is walk away from your post at the height of the dinner rush. 
And so I take my glove off and I pull out my phone and I see that it's my friend. And all of a sudden, I kind of forgotten that I had done the whole thing just in the rush and the whole craziness. And I see it's my friend. He's called twice in a row. And I was thinking, oh, God, wonder, wonder what's happening. And so I leave as the machine is spitting out orders and there's more. I leave my post and I can see the other guy on the other side of the oven looking at me as I walked to the back being like, dude, where are you going? It's also a huge cardinal rule. You can't go and take a phone call. There's cameras everywhere. The owner says he watches. And so you can't go take a phone call either. So I walk to the back and pick up the phone. I go, hello? And I can tell my friend has been crying hard, you know. And he just goes, did you write that message on my computer? And I didn't have time to keep the joke going. I also could tell he'd been crying, so I didn't think he was any time to keep the joke going. And so all I said was, yes, it was me. And he just goes, fuck you, dude, and hangs up. So I'm just sitting in the back next to the dishwashing sink and the walk-in cooler. I'm just thinking like, well, I guess it worked. And so then I just quickly went back and finished up the dinner rush. So now I'm making all these sandwiches, stressed out, thinking, I mean, wonder what happened. Like, I I hope he didn't, like, text a professor and actually get in trouble. Now my mind's racing, what? And so either after, when everything slowed down, either I called another one of my buddies that lives in the house with him, or he called me, or at some point I found what happened, and so... I answer, I finally get him on the phone or he calls and I'm like, dude, what happened? And he goes, oh man, Scott, there was a meltdown. He was crying. He called his mom who lives in Wisconsin and told her that he had been caught cheating and was facing expulsion. They had got on like Priceline or one of the travel websites and she had started to looking for a, to book a flight out to Colorado to put out the academic dishonesty fire that her son had gotten in and then while they were both furiously and frantically trying to google and find dave dalstead in the university um you know list of faculty during that you know she's trying she's looking to buy a ticket they're all finally my buddy noticed is that it was on notepad And he goes, wait a second, I got to call my friend Scott. And so after he called me, he had to call his mom back and say, Mom, um, listen, I actually was not caught cheating. It was all just a joke from my friend. And I don't think his mom was very happy, at least that night. So that was the first Dave Dahlstedt email or message that he sent. The second one was a few years later, and at the time, I was in the process of being fired from the weed-themed, jam band-themed sub-sandwich place. They, long story short, they were pretty much just firing everybody. The managers, I think, the whole thing had kind of, uh, the whole staff had sort of bottomed out. There was a lot of partying happening during the shifts, as you can imagine, at a weed-themed um sandwich shop so i think they were like we're getting all new managers they're wearing collared shirts you know they're not going to be tripping acid during the shift hopefully and so there was like a big change of staff during this whole time so they first they got all new managers that were all you know the new age like i said wearing their collared shirts being like you guys we are really going to work hard at today and the we're the old staff that was used to the old way, just being like, all right, man, you need to calm down. But anyway, like I said, they're fi- kind of firing everybody. And and I knew I was fired for real when uh, the, the sk- new schedule came out. I wasn't on it. I called the manager, who I was pretty good friends with. You know, I'd worked there, I think, for two or three years at this point. And was pretty mad I was getting fired, actually. Looking back, I think it was probably understandable they were just getting rid of everybody and starting over but I was pretty mad I was getting fired especially not for a concrete reason other than just like we're going in a new direction 
And um, so I'm not on the schedule. And so I call the manager who we worked hours together. We're friends, you know, and he's not picking up the phone. So I probably called his phone like 20 times in one day. And it started to make me laugh just thinking, you know, obviously knew he saw the, you know, Scott Sharp is calling. I obviously knew he saw his phone and just didn't want to deal with it. And so I kept just calling over and over again. I think it was a Sunday just to keep his mind it's hard to relax on a Sunday when that phone keeps buzzing and you know you're going to have to fire someone that you've worked with for years, you know. And so finally the next day he calls me, brings me in, does the official firing and uh and I go back to my place. And for the next couple days I'm just stewing. I'm mad at the owner, I'm mad at the manager. And um and then I remember just how easily manipulated the owner was every time he got an email. And I got an idea. And after years of being in dormant and in hiding, Dave Dahlstead came back to life for another email. And so this is what I, I was th sitting there thinking, you know, like I said, I was really mad. I was stewing and I thought, all right, I'm going to send an email to just the contact. And I knew the owner and the managers would get it. So a few days after being fired from the weed and jam band theme sub sandwich shop, I sent them a little email as Dave Dahlstead. And this is what it says. Oh yeah, first before I read this. Only someone that worked at a place for years would know how to really just touch on every business insecurity that the owner has. So you'll see this. In my opinion, reading this now, 15 years later, I almost think I went overboard uh, where it doesn't sound realistic. Uh, but here it is. So here's the email I sent to him. To whom it may concern, my name is Dave Dahlstedt. I live in Fort Collins and am a big fan of your spot. My job brought me to Fort Collins to the Fort Collins area about a year ago, and your spot was one of the first new restaurants my wife and I decided to try. It only took one visit and we were hooked. It felt like you guys were able to capture the unique feel and quirky style of Fort Collins. I remember we were politely greeted immediately after we walked in. The staff was top notch. We were helped by a thin young man with curly red hair. He was able to answer all of our questions, I had a bunch, and guide us through the unique ordering process. He even remembered my name the next two times I came in. The staff was singing and dancing while they worked and got us our sandwiches lightning fast. I remember thinking to myself when we sat down, wow, this place is really special. Now, less than a year after our first visit, I can't even get my wife to come in anymore, and I don't blame her. The last three or four times we have come in have been subpar to say the least. Lately, it has taken forever to get our sandwiches, and it seems like the smart, fun-loving, hard-working staff got replaced by grumpy punk kids. A week or so ago, my friends came in from out of town. We had told them about your place, and they were eager to check it out. Afterwards, I actually felt embarrassed that I had talked it up so much. I am still a big fan of your spot, and the last thing I want to do is sound like a bitchy customer. I give you this constructive criticism with the utmost respect and hope it helps you. You guys had something special, something that set you apart from every other place, and without it, you're just another fast food restaurant. So, like I said, I even think maybe being mad and just stewing for a couple days about being fired, I went a little overboard. But anyway, I hammered out that email, signed it Dave Dahlstead, and hit send. And I was sitting in my room, and I heard my roommates down in the living room talking, and I was like, I'm going to go tell them about this. So I closed my laptop, I walked down, and I go, you got, they all knew I got fired, obviously. And so I'm sitting there telling them, yeah, I sent them this email. They had known how Dave Dahlstead had th thrown my other friend into a complete mess where he called his mom crying and told her he got caught cheating. So they had known Dave Dahlstead from that. So I had told them old Dave Dahlstead sent another email to my old job. And as I'm telling them that story, you couldn't write this. 
as I'm telling them, my phone rings and I pull it out and it's the owner of the sub sandwich shop. And I, so I'm going, holy shit, you guys, he's calling me right now. It took less than five minutes for the owner to call me. I sent the email, closed my laptop, walked down the stairs to the living room, just started to tell my friends, hey, listen what I just did. It's kind of funny. And now the owner of this place is calling. So I had to do like the shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. And I, I answered it on speakerphone, which I'm glad I had witnesses, or I don't think. To this day, one of the guys that I lived with is like, do you remember when you sent that guy the email and he called you? That was, that was crazy. So I'm like, shut up, shut up. So I pick it up. Hello? He goes, hey, Scott, this is, you know, says his name. How are you? And so I was playing it like I was mad I got fired. And I was like, hey, man, I'm... I've been better. And he's like, yeah, I, I can understand that. Listen, I think we made a big mistake and I want to talk to you. Would you meet me for lunch tomorrow at the Thai restaurant across the street from the sub shop? And I said, yeah, I, let, well, let me check my schedule. And I just like had nothing to do for two weeks, you know. I was like, let me check. Yeah, I think I think I could do that. And he goes, great. All right. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, Scott. And I was like, OK, I'll see you tomorrow. And I hung up the phone and they're like, oh, my, you know, we're like, oh, my God. And so now I have a lunch date with the owner of the place that fired me because he's freaked out of some email that he got from someone named Dave Dahlstead that was actually just me. And then later on that day, the email account I'd created for Dave Dahlstead to send the email, they replied back and were like, yeah, Dave, thank you so much for saying. I wish I had the actual email. I can't log into. I forgot the password to the email account. Luckily, I printed what I had said out years ago. But I can't, I can't remember exactly what they said back, but it was something like, we read your email. We're so happy you reached out. You really kicked us in the balls and got us you know, moving in a different direction. And so I was like, nice, just with an email, I kicked the boss that fired me in the balls. That feels pretty good. And so the next day, more just for the story than anything, I was like, I have to go and do this. So I go and I meet this guy for lunch and we sit down and it's a little awkward and we order lunch. And um, while we're waiting for lunch, he sets out this proposal saying that he feels like they screwed up and that I've been a good member of the team and an important member of the team and then they want to bring me back and that they want to make me a manager and he unfolds this big proposition you know we want to bring you back we want to make you a manager we made a big mistake what do you think and I was just like nah I don't think so I think I'm, I just, I think that I just said no, basically. And so I think that really surprised him because I think he was thinking, why would you have come to lunch if you didn't, weren't, wa didn't want to come back to work? And so right as we're kind of sitting there as I'm like, yeah, no, thank you. And he's going, wait, they bring the food. And so now he had gotten through his big spiel already. And I had said, yeah, no, thank you. And he definitely didn't want to be friends with me. And I didn't want to be friends with him. So now we just, we just mowed down the food. He's just staring at my stupid face, eating Thai food. I think thinking, what is going on? And I just finish and I'm like, hey, yeah, you know, thank you so much for lunch. I really enjoyed it. And he... I, was just like yeah all right see you later the whole thing i think took like 30 minutes total like we really just mounged down and then he walked back to his place which is right across the street and i left and then a couple days later i get a call and someone you know of course just like i had pictured then my email had been taped to the walk-in cooler so all the, the employees had to stare at it for a week or two or whatever it was like he always did and one of the employees had just been sitting there during a slow moment reading it. He goes, I think Scott wrote this. 
And then I think another one wrote it. And they go, I think Scott wrote this too. So they called me while they were working and I just told them. And so I guess slowly it spread around the restaurant that I was the one that wrote the email that sent everyone into a total frenzy to figure out how to change the whole thing. And really, I enjoy, I mean, obviously I'm over it at this point, but I really enjoyed thinking of the owner realizing that it was me and just all the connections in his mind of, you know, the meeting he probably had with his staff and hanging it up and calling me and taking me out to dinner and just my stupid smile while I'm mowing down Thai food and turning down the offer. And, um, and so, and that was the last email that Dave Dahlstedt ever wrote. He was two for two. And, you know, like I said, I, Dave, with the help of Dave Dahlstedt, I was able to kick the owner that fired me in the balls. I'm going to cut it off there. I hope that you guys had a good week. I'll see you next time. Why, Stiven, why? Shamita. <laughs>